Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Day. It is Tuesday, March 12th. I'm Michael Taylor. Welcome to the program. Uh, we got a great show for you, Phil. Let's get right to it. We're going to be talking about your financial health and security with Jerry Slusowitz from Pacific Financial Planners. And then later in the program, South Orange County Community College District's own trustee, Marsha Milkitcher is going to be here. I want to make sure I said that name right. She's going to be here talking about a lot of things going on at Saddleback and Irvine and the Emeritus program right here. Let's stay informed. We've got a good one for you. It's probably the last time we announced this, so make sure you're writing things down or get up and go and get that application. Third is looking to fill a board vacancy. They are accepting uh, applications right now. The term is going to be ending in 2025, the one you're filling. Applications are over at the CEO's office of Laguna Woods Village Community Center. And the deadline to get that turned in is coming this Friday. Candidates will be interviewed the next week and then appointments will be made shortly after. So if you're interested in, interested in serving on the third's board, this is your opportunity to do so. Okay, let's take a look outside and our weather. Hey, remember how we talked about it could warm up for the weekend? We can just forget about that now. The weather has changed a little bit. We actually had some overnight sprinkles last night. For the next two nights, we have a chance for some overnight, about 10%, but just a chance for some a little bit of light showers, sprinkles overnight. And we got a breezy conditions as well as the sun and the starts to develop. So we're going to be in the 60s, maybe get up to 70 on Thursday. That's going to be the warmest day of the week. And then we start uh, going back into the 60s, and the weekend's going to be just about the same thing. So not terrible, but not the warm-up that we were hoping for. Hey, let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset while we're at it. Great shot down here from Laguna Beach. Sunrise this morning was 7.04. Sunset tonight is going to be 6.56. The days are getting longer. We have sprung forward. All right, if you'd like to send us a photo of a beach shot, your pet, places around Laguna Woods Village, we'd love to see them. Email us at lagunawoodsvillagetv at gmail.com. Make sure you include your name, where you took the photo, and we will use it in our sunrise sunset segment. Okay, let's take a look at a meeting we have for today, and then when we come back, Pacific Financial Planners. Stay with us. The Salvation Army Orange County is committed to building hope in people's lives rather than just more shelters. The Center of Hope, a comprehensive homeless care solution, combines a 325-bed emergency shelter, 72 permanent supportive housing apartments, on-site medical, dental, vision, and mental health care, and an award-winning drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Donate today to transform lives, create safer neighborhoods, and provide an opportunity to end chronic homelessness in Orange County. Welcome to OCI Care, Laguna Woods' premier laser and premium cataract surgery center with Dr. Vias. I just wanted my cataracts removed. It was pain free. I was so impressed because I was so frightened to have it done. After surgery, I was able to use my eyes immediately. It was a miracle, really. It's just been wonderful to be able to see everything, not having to wear glasses. It's even better, actually, than he said it was going to be because I saw instantly. No one deserves to be ashamed of their smile. MacArthur Dental Arts is here to bring back your confidence. We specialize in a personalized smile restoration through the power of dental implants and perfect fit dentures. I'm here to answer all your questions with free in-office consults using our Laguna Woods service special. Don't wait to get the secure, worry-free smile you deserve. Visit MacArthurDentalArts.com or call the number on your screen to schedule your consultation today. Are you winning at the game of retirement? I hope so. If not, we probably need to take some advice here from Jerry Slusowitz from Pacific Financial Planners. Jerry, thanks for coming to the show again. Michael, thank you for having me. Now let's, let's talk about this. So, so what are some of the keys, uh, what are some of the important things at winning the game of life financially? You, you manage money, you know what, what works and what doesn't in the long run, right? So talk to us a little bit about what people should be thinking about in terms of how we can create some wealth. Right, Michael. Thinking about it is the key, is having the right mindset. And so winning the game of life, you know, 
is different for different people, right? It, it just kind of depends on what station they're kind of at. You know, for right. our viewers here in the village, you know, might be living here and, you know, traveling to Hawaii or New York once a year. And uh, for someone else living here, but traveling to Hawaii or New York once a year, but riding first class. Someone else might say, hey, look, I want to take my private jet whenever I want to go, wherever right. I want to go. But when you reach this age, you know, the 55 plus crowd, you generally have reached a station in your life that you kind of switch this mindset mm -hmm. to maintain. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I afford this for the rest of my life? I find very few people are at a station at 60, 70 years old saying, hey, I, I want to go to the private jets. The next I mean? level. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's maintaining, maintaining where you are today is kind of winning the game of life mm -hmm. for our audience. Right. And that old Milton Bradley game where you spun and you did the game of life and everything like that, I, you know, there were different paths for everybody. Like you said, hey, some people aren't going to college, some people are going to this street, some people want to just have the simple life, some people want the jets, right? So what are some of the key building blocks for folks who want to have the successful retirement? Right. Well, again, the building blocks for success uh, you know, it's the ones that that game you either ended up in Millionaire Acres is what it was called. <laughs> I think it was called that, right? Or the poorhouse. <laughs> so, so it really starts with having a plan. That's the basic concept. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not spend the time having a plan. They'll plan that vacation to Hawaii. They'll spend more time planning that than they will planning the retirement. And people go, like, "Well, I'm already retired." Yes, you are. But are you properly allocated for right. your risk tolerance? For your income needs? Do you know your expenses? Mm -hmm. How about from taxes? Are you the, investing in the most tax efficient way? Mm -hmm. And then estate planning, we all got to go someday. Right. Is your estate set up in the manner that you want it to, to transfer to wherever that is that you want that right. money to go? And that's a hard conversation sometimes to have with parents and older folks about, hey, what, what's going to happen? We don't want things to fall into probate. That could be, that's the worst possible scenario for someone who's built a life and a home and all of these things, and then their kids are, are in the courts trying to figure it all out, right? Yeah, it's horrible when it gets to that. I mean, right. I, see this, I see this multiple times a year, Michael, and it's very unfortunate. It's titling. It goes down to titling. And it is the financial advisor who should be telling these folks, our listeners, mm -hmm. make sure you title it right. I've seen people say, well, you know, Joni, my oldest daughter, is the most responsible. I'm going to leave my $1 million 401k to her, and she'll split it amongst her four other siblings. Each should get 200 each. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you right now. Joni's keeping that money. <laughs> yeah, Joni's All not right. splitting up I, anything. I, I've been, I served on the uh, Orange County FAST team, the financial abuse specialist team back in the 90s when they first founded it. And, you know, obviously there's the rogue financial advisor, CPA attorney who steals and, and preys on seniors and, and scams are up and it's horrible. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is families account for about 75% of senior financial abuse by not helping structure things properly. I feel like we're getting a little bit of a sneak peek right now, but you have an upcoming workshop about building blocks for retirement. What are some of the things you'll be kind of going over the ABCs of what people should be doing? Well, again, it comes down to having a plan and structuring that plan. It's, it's really important to understand that. And, and so we'll, we have a handouts that are very valuable. All you got to do is show up. Nobody has to you know, sign in or give your name or participate, but that will help you come up with your real expenses. And mm -hmm. then we'll help you calculate what your real income is and see if there's a shortfall or a gain. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if there's a shortfall, it's got to come through your investments and your savings. So how do you make those savings last? Mm -hmm. And so right. we'll, we'll talk about strategies in depth for any level of wealth to really help everybody understand it. I, I did radio for 20 years. People say I understand, uh, I explain things in an easy to understand format. Good. Now some folks may be saying, oh, well, it's too late for me to invest, but also we're also talking about with the money you have right now, how you can best use it, how, how you set up your accounts. How, well, like you say, are you in tax-free accounts? Are you in paying taxes? Whatever it might be, right? So setting up the money you have to make it last as long as possible, just coming up with a plan if somebody's not doing it quite right right now, right? Yeah, it's so important. And, and again, I offer these free reviews where people want to sit down with me. Mm -hmm. it, it really comes down to having a structured, personalized financial game of life winning strategy mm -hmm for you based on where you are, what your spending habits are, and how you're all allocated. Because a lot of people, I'm gonna tell you, Michael, are still taking way too much risk here in the village. I look at portfolios okay. all the time. Really? There, yeah, sure, there's some people that you know have all their money in the bank and it's all under a mattress and stuff like that, and, and, and maybe they're too conservative, 
but far too often I see people with too much risk mm -hmm. than the other way around. Yeah, and so playing around with Bitcoin and <laughs> that's like a craze that. right now. It's a craze, and that's really what it is. It's never going to replace our currency. So, right. but you know, you can make money and you can lose a lot of money as well. So people sometimes find the idea of retirement a little bit daunting, right? And it can be. What's your approach to help easing people into that, helping them through that that kind of scary idea of? Oh, my retirement, what am I going to do? How's it going to work? Well, having done this for 37 years, I'm not just, you know, here's your best investment here, buy this mutual fund, this stock, etc. Mm -hmm. We take a more holistic approach to it right. because it is a daunting situation, Michael, as you mentioned. So what we want to do is break it down into small, easy steps, mm -hmm. just a little bit here, a little bit there, and we can help you along the way um, to try to maximize your Social Security if you haven't taken it yet. If you're already on it, Great, but how should you invest to save money on taxes? There, there's things you could do, just slight shifts. Mm -hmm. So we're not like, you know, hey, you gotta make changes. It's complimentary, there's no obligation, you don't have to do anything. But I gotta tell you, in this environment, this kind of market, it, it's been pretty good the last year and a half after mm -hmm. this 2022 debacle, but there's so much risk out there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. get a review, take advantage of it, complimentary, no obligation, come to the financial forum, we'll discuss things, and you will benefit, I assure you, with our handouts and, and some of the knowledge we impart. Right, so now you don't have a crystal ball you bring out and say, okay, here's what the future is going to be, so I can tell you this, but you do have some just tried and true methods, like listen, no matter what the economy is, no matter what, it, here's your plan, and here's how we can make something safe that works best for you, right? Is it is it more about individuals' needs, tailoring it there, instead of trying to predict the markets? Yeah, no, 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 you can't predict the markets, nobody can, <laughs> we have no idea. Nobody does. Nobody does. I mean, again, I did radio for 20 years. I could give you a whole pontification of which direction the market's going to move. Mm -hmm. But in the end, no, we're talking about financial planning, a specific financial planner who do financial planning. And one of the things you just mentioned was unexpected events. Look, you've got a plan for unexpected events. We all want longevity. So the longer you live, guess what? The more unexpected events there's going to be, mm -hmm. the more bad markets there's going to be. So you're having an emergency fund having money designed for long-term care. See, to me, long-term care can't be an unexpected event anymore. If you live here in the village, we all know people who have had to, you know, eventually need help. Not everybody, but about half. So how are you gonna pay for that? Right. So we can plan for that today before those events happen. So when they do happen, we know which assets we're gonna use to pay for them and how we're going to handle all that sort of stuff. Even should you keep your house or sell your house. I talk to children all the time whose parents sure. entered into this situation. You know, there's a, it's a pretty high level discussion versus buy this stock or buy this mutual Right, product. absolutely. I always get some good financial sound advice from Pacific Financial Planners, very own Jerry Slusowitz. Thank you for joining us, as always. Thank you, Michael. All right, when we come back, we'll get an update from the South Orange County Community College District. Stay with us. Welcome to Pacific Financial Planners. We focus on income replacement for your retirement. We have over three decades of professional money management experience. We personalize a plan that's right for you and your family. You only get one shot at retirement. Don't you think you better get it right? So give us a call for your free consultation. We can do this over the phone, via Zoom, or in person. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2024 Subaru Outback shares your spirit with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive and up to 32 miles per gallon. Plus, 97% of Outback vehicles sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today. The 2024 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you.
Irvine Subaru. Buy online, just come in to sign. Get two years complimentary maintenance included on all new Subarus. The Hogue Classic is returning March 20th through the 24th. Come experience the thrill of champions. For tickets, visit HogueClassic.com. See you at the beach. So well, there's a lot of great things going on in the South Orange County Community College District. I'm a Saddleback College attendee from many years back, and uh, I want to introduce Trustee Marsha Milchicker to Hello. our program. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Thanks, and for, I, and thanks for being here. I've been a Saddleback College attendee for 40 years, <laughs> and I can tell you the whole history, but I actually got my AA in, in Spanish at Saddleback College after I taught biology at Santa Ana College, and I was a research biologist, and I just am a lifelong learner, so I'm always taking classes at Saddleback College, and wow. that's the way it's been since the very beginning, and that's really why I ran for the board. Right, and that's one of the great things about a community college system. It's not uh, the standard four year where it's just folks who are going to get a specific degree. It's, it's lifelong learners, it's emeritus, it's, it's people who are transferring to four year schools, it's so many things. Yeah, it is, and, and the community colleges, when the, when the master plan for higher education was done in, in 1960, it was um, the University of California were, were to take the top one-third students and offer PhDs. The Cal States were supposed to take the top, um, I'm sorry, the University of California, the top one-eighth. Uh, the University of California were to take the top one-third students, and the community colleges were going to take anybody that could benefit from a community college education. Mm -hmm. And that's our Laguna Woods residents. That's our Emeritus Institute. They're right. in our area and they can benefit from a community college education. So we offer it to them, and we're the, the largest Emeritus Institute, I think, in the nation. And I could go through it. I, I saved the Emeritus <laughs> Institute over and over and over again. Um, when well, I first, it's valued here. We yeah, appreciate it, it. When I first ran for the board um, in, a number of years ago, um, the Emeritus Institute was threatened, and they were going to study the community colleges. They thought they were too expensive, the students weren't getting through fast enough, a lot of things. So they, 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 they ordered, uh, the state ordered a study of the community colleges, and they had these huge commissions taking testimony all over the state. And one of the plans was to do away with adult continuing education. Oh, that's so, a terrible and that idea. would have that would have kiboshed all of the all the emeritus classes all over the whole state, mm -hmm. and we would not be allowed to offer them. So, I talked to a number of emeritus students and found out how important it was to them. And um, so we took, and so that was my campaign promise to save the emeritus institute. And I did it. There you because, go. Yeah, yeah, because we took <laughs> we took busloads of emeritus students to the hearings all over the state. Oh, okay. And it was the emeritus students talking to the legislators, talking about how important the classes were for them, how important it was for their minds, how important it was for their bodies, how it kept them out of nursing homes, how it was such a low cost to offer these classes compared with taking care of people once they got sick, mm -hmm. once they got right. uh, dementia, once they got... Um, they, they had trouble walking, um, and, it, and how good it was, and how much better it was for people to keep them healthy and active and, and you know, in, in society and, and, and um, uh, being with, with people, and so we won. And so over the years, when the Emeritus Institutes get threatened, we keep fighting for them over and over and over again, and we keep winning, so it sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good to me, too. Hey, you know what's a really cool thing going on at Saddleback College is the Mars Rover team. Tell me a little about that. Well, I have to tell you about that because about two years ago, um, I noticed the Mars Rover team at Saddleback College, and I'm, as I said, a biology teacher, and I understood how fabulous these students were. They're brilliant, and they work so hard uh, to create these Mars Rovers, and they're, you know, like, like the NASA Mars Rovers, they work and work and work, and they help their Mars Rovers, they build their Mars Rovers, they work for years, they send their Mars Rovers to Mars, never to be seen again, but they know the Mars Rovers are just happy in Mars, because that's what they were <laughs> built, to be very, very happy there. And that's the same with our students' Mars Rovers. They build a Mars Rover every year. Our community college students are the only community college that has gotten into this University Rover Challenge, wow. URC. Um, and we compete every year in Hanksville, Utah. We take a van to Hanksville, Utah, where it looks like you're on the moon. 
Uh, there's a geology professor that said it's more like on the moon than like on Mars, but it's either like on Mars or on the moon. It's right, very, they have to perform a number of tasks, get the rover over this, obstacles and those kinds of things, right? And they're in, in competition with the four-year high-level engineering type students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a amazing. Our, our Mars rover, they design it so that it will um, drive uh, autonomously mm -hmm. with, without any uh, help from the students. Also, it will drive forward, drive back, open up screws, open up doors, carry things, put things into things. Um, collect rocks, collect samples, and then the science team, that's the one that I'm in charge of, determines if, if these soil samples have any life in them at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for life on Mars. Mm -hmm. And so just to, just to tell you something, last year, um, Saddleback College was the only community college that got into it. Caltech, who makes real Mars rovers, didn't get into it. Berkeley didn't get into it. And we came out ahead of Cornell and Bangladesh and India and many, many other countries. And um, our Mars rover team was, uh, the science team was 13 out of um, 106 schools. Mm -hmm. We don't have graduate students. We just have two-year students. And these students work really hard. They work through, through the- It's um, amazing. They work through the Super Bowl. They work through, through the Academy <laughs> Awards. They work every Sunday afternoon to, 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 to um, create the Mars rover. And, and there's a picture of, right. of one of our Mars rovers. They're different every year. They build a new one every year. And not only am I a volunteer the whole time, but the science teacher, the physics teacher, and the astronomy teacher, and the geology teacher are, are all volunteers. Everyone's a volunteer for this program. Oh, so that sounds great. like they love it. It sounds like you love it, too. You can I see do. your enthusiasm about I it. Do. Let's get back to the Meredith Institute. We have summer classes. Registration is starting pretty soon, right? What, what, can, what are we offering? What, what are folks looking at in these programs? Well, well right now, um, there's over 100 sections of online classes and over 70 sections of classes that meet face-to-face -face across mm -hmm. Orange County. Things changed a little bit during the um, pandemic. I, I have some friends that, that were in, living in Manners and Laguna Woods during the pandemic, and they said the Emeritus Institute saved their lives because they were stuck for years in their uh, manner by themselves. And the Emeritus Institute, you, you're, you're, if you take an, an asynchronous class, that means you could take it any time. If you take a synchronous class, that means that you could see all the faces of other students on the, on the, on the screen. And you could take art classes, aerobic classes, Spanish classes, um, uh, history classes. There's just a myriad mm -hmm. of classes. And if you want to find out what the classes are now, because the summer schedule is up right now, you can just look under um, the Saddleback website or the Irvine Valley College website. And um, just look under um, Saddleback College Saddleback.edu Saddleback.edu slash emeritus. Amer slash emeritus, <laughs> right, right. And you'll see the classes there. In about two weeks, the students will be getting an emeritus catalog, a hard, a, a, I'm sorry, a class schedule. And that is a paper class schedule. And the emeritus are the only discipline that gets a paper class schedule. So that means how much we love the emeritus students. So they'll be getting one in the mail, and also um, they'll be at the clubhouses. They'll be dropped off at the clubhouses. And, and just look through the schedule for Saddleback College or Irvine Valley College. Actually, Laguna Woods is in the Saddleback area, mm -hmm. and Saddleback has a much more robust um, emeritus uh, program. But if you look at the Irvine Valley College program, there's a few classes that aren't offered at Saddleback College, like right tap dancing and line dancing. So those are two of them that aren't, that aren't offered at Saddleback <laughs> and College. And I know some of the Meredith classes are held right here in, at, in Laguna Woods Village, so you don't have to drive all the way down to Saddleback or Irvine Valley College to be able to attend in-person classes as well, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. All of our Meredith classes, except for two, except for some of the choir classes that meet at Saddleback College, except for those, are in, in uh, centers all over Orange County, mm -hmm. South Orange County. We have the, the, the whole geographical southern half of Orange County. so. And, and the majority are in Laguna Woods. So, right. so we have most of our classes here, um, art classes. Um, and But if you want to just stay at home and just watch your classes at home, you could take them online. You can have that so, online community, too. It's a yeah. great option. I want to talk about the Dorothy Lowry guest lecture series that you guys are really happy about that you guys have coming up. There's a couple of great, great speakers coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a woman named Dorothy Lowry who was a very um, kind of um, quiet woman who was taking emeritus classes. And when she passed away, she left $2.3 million to the Saddleback College Emeritus Institute. And that's how much the emeritus meant to her. So we named the Dorothy Lowry guest series, lecture series after her. And that meets every Friday morning. Um, and you could either take it 
in the big lecture hall in, in one of the clubhouses, I think Clubhouse One, mm -hmm. or you could take it um, online. And I have a secret that many of these lectures are actually um, uh, recorded, and you could go to the Saddleback College YouTube channel and um, oh, okay. Saddleback College Emeritus YouTube channel and see many of these lectures on the YouTube channel as well. Well, the secret's but they're, out. They're, and, but, <laughs> but they, yeah, but you could still, even though um, the, uh, um, the the spring semester is ending on um, May 22nd, um, you could still get into this class. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a whole number of classes that if you go on the website, it will say open classes, and you could get into many of these classes, because we try to be flexible. We try to be flexible with all of our students. We found out that students today want to be flexible. They want to be able to take classes when they want to take them. So we try to let students into the classes, even though they've already started in January. So, so just look, and, and you could join classes right now. And th these are a list of the speakers and topics that are coming up. Some of them sound pretty interesting to me uh, as well. Yeah, we just have about a minute left, so I okay. want to talk real quickly about the new building going on at Saddleback and Irvine, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's wonderful new buildings going on at, at all three colleges. At our ATEP, Advanced Technology Education Park, which is our public-private partnership, we already have um, two, two uh, companies that have bought buildings there. That's ATEC, that's Advanced, Advantech and Goddard Preschool. And um, we also have a, a, an Irvine Valley College building, which is uh, the IDEA building, which is like a robotics building. We also are building a Saddleback College building, which is going to be a very high-tech automotive uh, training center for the students to learn how to fix autonomous cars, um, uh, and any kind of fancy cars that they have now, electric cars. <laughs> We're also putting a culinary art school, and our culinary art school is very famous. If you go to any of the restaurants around, you'll see people that work, that got their training at Saddleback College, and they're going to be having a restaurant there, so the students will run a restaurant. Then at Saddleback College, we have, um, we, we just finished building the Gateway Building, which is kind of based upon the Apple Store, where the students can come in and oh. feel very comfortable with the other students, have like a relationship with the other students, have big television uh, screens where they won't wait in line when their time is up to, to meet with the counselor, to meet with the vet center, to meet with uh, the disability center. Um, it'll come up on the screen, and they, they don't have they to wait in line. They meet at the they, Genius Bar with it, the counselor. It, it's, it's genius, <laughs> we have our Genius Bars there and everything. It's fabulous. So you can see all the, all the, uh, all, all the um, different disciplines that we have to help our students feel welcome into the Saddleback College campus. And at Irvine Valley College, we're developing an arts village. And the arts village, Irvine Valley College was, was founded in 1985, and they were able to have different pods for different disciplines. So they could have all their students going through these disciplines go through together. So the Arts Village will have music and dance, visual arts, and a fine art well, gallery. And it this sounds like you guys fabulous. got plenty going on. There's always a lot to talk about at South Orange County Community College District. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let's take a quick check of the weather. We have a 10% chance of some rain over the next few nights. Marshall was happy about that, not having to walk to the plants. And then we get pretty <laughs> breezy as well during the day. Going to be in the 60s. And uh, we'll hopefully get a little warm up. But Probably not going to happen until next week. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. Thanks for joining us. For all of us here at This Day, we hope you make this one a great one.